Hello everyone, welcome to Scardia.com. This is Dr. Sana Khan with a general surgery course. We have started discussing about the different uh, vascular component of the, um, you know, of the of the general surgery course. And so far, we have been discussing about the arterial surgery, and we have been discussing about the venous surgery, and uh, we have started. Uh, the lymphatic uh, part of the general surgery as well and the conditions which are related to the lymphatic system. In the previous lecture, uh, we have talked about the, uh, you know, the lymphatic channels and the function um, of, the, of the lymph, the production of the lymph, and how actually the whole of the lymph of the body is being drained into the larger ducts. Uh, we also discuss about the mechanism, uh, what actually has to do with the hydrostatic and the oncotic capillary pressure. And we have also discussed about some of the conditions uh, which are important, pathological conditions which are important to know in the previous lecture. We discussed about uh, you know, precisely about the primary and the secondary lymphedema. But today, uh, we'll be talking in detail about the development and the comparison. And in the next lecture, we'll be talking about the investigations and the management. So uh, let's have, the, uh, have a look at the outline of today's lecture. So in today's lecture, we'll be talking about uh, the causes behind the development of the primary lymphedema. First of all, you should know what is a primary lymphedema and how do you define it. Uh, we'll be talking more uh, comprehensively about, about the uh, level, at what level actually the, the problem is generated. We'll be talking more about uh, the mutations uh, which leads to the development of the lymphedema. We'll be talking about some important syndromes, Milroy, Noonan, and tuberous sclerosis in case of the primary lymphedema. We'll be talking about uh, some of the etiological factors which are responsible uh, for the development of the primary lymphedema and the most important is obviously the congenital uh, hypoplasia or dysplasia of the lymphatic system. And we'll be talking about the factors which are actually uh, causing uh, the uh, dysplasia or hypoplasia of the lymphatic system. We'll be talking about the classification and we'll be talking about the categories like genetic susceptibility, we'll, uh, age of the onset and lympho lymphangiographic classification in detail. Uh, uh, beside that, we'll be talking about uh, some of the investigations like the lymphangiogram and we'll be talking how actually the lymphangiogram is going uh, and going to help you in the lymphangiographic classification and telling you more precisely about the level or is it either it's the proximal or the distal obliteration. Then more precisely, we'll be talking about the secondary lymphedema, which is very, very much important to know and uh, its classification on the basis of the uh, causes and like malignant infection, inflammation, endocrine causes, and we'll be talking in detail about the filariasis. Filariasis is somehow very, very much common worldwide. It's affecting like 100 million of the population so far. So uh, in detail, we'll be talking about this. We'll be talking about the organism responsible and how it's actually traveling uh, to the lymphatic channels. We'll be talking uh, about the acute um, infection of the filariasis, how actually the patient is going to present to you. And we'll be talking uh, little bit about the symptoms of the chronic inflammation of this organism, which is called as Wachera Bancroft High. Then there is another entity important to be discussed, which is about the endemic elephantiasis, a very um, advanced kind of the disease and affecting badly uh, with the development of the uh, vascular insufficiency as well. We'll be talking in detail about that. Then, and then we'll be a uh, little bit discussing about the conditions which are actually not, uh, it's a kind of uh, false lymphedema or actually the conditions which are mimicking the lymphedema. And we'll be talking uh, in detail about the lipoedema and how you are actually going to differentiate between a lipoedema and lymphedema. So we have other lectures on our website, which is this cardio.com. You can go there, get access, and enjoy uh, lectures regarding anatomy, physiology, dermatology, or general surgery, whatever you need. 
So that's all for today. Thank you for watching scadia.com. Keep watching for the detail lecture.